For RCR Wireless News, my name is Sean Kinney, and we're here at Mobile World Congress with Ken Hosek and Lindsay Notwell of Cradle Point to learn a little bit about the company and your take on the industry. So we got to start with 5G. There's been so many vendor and operator announcements leading the show, it's almost hard to hear through the noise. So what's your take on the development of 5G right now? So 5G is something that... Um has been in the conversation for some time, but the exciting thing here is we're actually going to start to see some of the networks come this year. And Cradle Point's been around for a long time. We were the very first LTE router in the world, and we've led the market for a number of years. Uh, and our position is to be that same kind of market leadership space uh, in this 5G world. We expect that we're actually gonna see some consumer uh, and enterprise commercial launches this year um, in a variety of different markets. It's a debate as to whether they'll be in Asia Pacific first or the U.S. first. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, but it's good to see that we're finally coming to some market launches. So we hear a lot about these 5G use cases like AR, VR, autonomous driving, things that you know speak to me as a consumer. What's the benefit for the enterprise as 5G develops and comes to market? Well, those use cases are the ones that are getting all the attention because they're exciting. I mean, uh, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, et cetera. But for our customers, and again, we go, we're uh, distributed enterprise. These are enterprises that have branch offices or vehicles or digital signage. They need more speed and they need reliability. And so their use cases are traditional enterprise networking, laptops, PCs, printers, but they're also adding bandwidth intensive IoT applications to their networks. Might go all the way from uh, video cameras with facial recognition to um, other customer analytics sensors, etc. And so what we're bringing to them with 5G is an ultra fast, ultra reliable uh, network connection to run their enterprise. One of the other things that we're seeing are some new use cases in some verticals, for example, healthcare. So uh, we're actually demonstrating here at Mobile World Congress one great use case. I call the general category remote SME, subject matter expert. So now instead of having very expensive people out in the field, you're actually able to leverage in a call center or at a doctor's home office the ability for that highly skilled remote subject matter expert and then less skilled, less expensive hands with the right equipment and the right connectivity at the end site. So that's a great example of one. We'll also see them in repair technicians with augmented reality. We've seen a lot of that in 4G. 5G will just put that on steroids. So I want to circle back to this uh, relationship between the IoT and 5G. We've had connective devices for a long time. How do you see the IoT exploding once 5G is there to support that connectivity? Well, it's, there's, uh, there's a couple aspects of that. First of all, 5G has some exciting native capabilities for IoT. The ability to support low power devices, uh, low bandwidth applications, etc., while at the same time supporting these high band applications. What we're seeing, again, with our distributed enterprises, they have at their locations a blend of traditional devices and IoT devices. Some of them are low power, some of them are high bandwidth on the local side of our appliance, our router. But on the WAN side, they just need it to be really, really fast and very, very reliable. And so the use case that we're addressing may be different than those initial use cases with the native 5G support, but we're bringing high bandwidth, high reliable bandwidth that's secure to the enterprise. And they're going to do two things with it. They're either going to enhance their existing applications or they're going to create new applications that weren't possible without that extra bandwidth. Let's hit on that security point a little bit more. The more connected devices you have out there as you take advantage of the IoT, the more network endpoints you have that become vulnerable which is obviously top of mind for any enterprise customer. Yeah. So how does 5G address this security concern? Well, there's two parts, and this is where CradlePoint's secret sauce with 5G really adds some elements to it. So the whole internet was built on this notion of connect first, authenticate second. Hackers love this. They look for all these devices that they can see, and then they pull out their hacking toolkit, and they'll crack it. You know, weak passwords, known vulnerabilities. And the Mariah attack, was IP cameras. 
they found the cameras, they infected it with malware, and they were able to go and do these uh, denial of service attacks. The secret sauce that CradlePoint's providing on top of the 5G networks is something called software-defined perimeter. It's a version of software-defined networking, but software-defined networking is about authenticate first, connect second. So if you can't authenticate at the device or at the local side, you don't even get to see the network. And so this is where CradlePoint and 5G working together can provide some really exciting capabilities to these enterprises. The other aspect of 5G that to me is a little bit of the sleeper is speeds are great, but it's the latency improvements that are going to be, in my mind, the real hero at the end of the day. And in that case, the requirement becomes now down to, in some cases, single digit milliseconds. And the traditional security model is I have this centralized firewall. And if I'm taking the traffic from the edge to that centralized firewall to the destination, which nowadays is out on the internet, that trombone effect introduces a lot of latency, negating the whole benefit that 5G is going to bring. And so having that security model that Ken was talking about, that it's now an overlay, it's, it's bank grade encryption, but it also places the security out in the cloud, is going to be one of the few ways you're going to be able to deliver that secure environment and still maintain the latency improvements that 5G wants to promise. And then it, just in terms of the overall trajectory of 5G, you hear a lot about this idea of it as a long-term pathway. So we've got the non-standalone specification. We're mm -hmm. looking at the standalone spec in maybe the middle of the year. But what is that development trajectory? Yeah, so the, the standards, most of which are complete, uh, the rest of which will coming, be coming mid-year, that'll enable many of the markets to launch even this year with true 5G. But the reality is that 5G won't be deployed everywhere right away. It'll come in phases. And unlike uh, where 4G replaced 3G and 2G, 5G has been designed to work for the foreseeable future, hand in glove, with 4G. So if you think about it, 4G will be sort of that macro backbone gigabit LTE kind of a network that 5G then will work as an overlay, either in the low bands, in a, right, a broader area, or in some of the millimeter waves in more of an urban hotspot kind of environment. So it's this great hand in glove, and that's why we call it this pathway, because 4G becomes 4G advanced, advanced pro, and then 5G, at the same time those speeds are increasing, and then 5G simply becomes that overlay wherever it needs to be. And as we kind of wrap up here though, gentlemen, I'd love to hear some of your predictions for the rest of 2018. We still have 10 months to go, so what do you think we're going to be talking about this time next year? Well, I think the hype is going to continue, just like it did two years ago, three years ago. But I think this is the first year where we're starting to see some reality start to emerge. And, uh, you know, if you look at the 5G modems right now, they're pretty big because they're built in prototype field gate arrays. I think what you're going to see this year is much more concrete deployment announcements, deployment plans. Uh, the trials are going to be really interesting, uh, where it's going to be pure 5G, uh, but you know you need people to combine that with 4G, and that's what we're good at. So. Yeah, and I'll go one step further. You know, we've been working with a number of the ecosystem players and network operators in some of these trials around the world. Um, I believe you're actually going to see some commercial launches this year. Probably not the first half, but the second half of the year. You know, in the United States, you've got AT&T and Verizon just neck and neck trying to be first to market. We've got some great uh, Asia Pacific operators who are vying to be first. And of course, we always have the Nordics who like to be first with those types of things. So I do predict we'll see some commercial market launches. Uh, they may not be uh, more than a few cities, but we're going to see some real 5G, and that's going to be very exciting. Well, Lindsay, Ken, I really appreciate you guys taking a moment to share Cradle Point's perspective, and it sure is an exciting time in the telecom industry. Thanks Thank for the you very time. Much. Should be great. Thank you.